Welcome, everybody, to today's edition of Home Solutions, your local home and garden show right here, broadcasting from the Mix 1041 studios here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, my name is Dennis Purvis, here with you as always in studio. Um, no matter how you're listening today, we hope you're having a great day. Maybe you're running around here enjoying some non uh, thunderstorms this beautiful Saturday. Uh, maybe you're uh, enjoying that it's finally got some warmer weather here. Um, or maybe you're just trying to dry out from all the uh, wet weather we had this week. Whether you're listening on, on Mix 104.1 or 101.3 The Buzz, maybe you're on the Mix 104.1 app uh, or you're streaming online. And for all those watching us right now on Facebook, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate We try to get you as much information as we can as homeowners, as, as uh, what you can do to look for folks that are here local to help you with all of your home and garden needs. Today, because of the weather changing, we're going to jump right in. It's that time, folks. All this rain, guess what's going to happen next week? You're going you're gonna to realize, oh my Lord, I need to mow my grass if you haven't already. And with that comes the all the machines that we use for that. So today I've got Lewis Stout from Stout Racing and Small Engine Repair here, right here in Cleveland, Tennessee, uh, back with us to talk about what we need to do to get ready for spring. Lewis, how you doing today, brother? Fine, sir. Glad to be here. I'm glad you're here too. So let's jump right in. Just tell a little bit, tell everybody a little bit about uh, you know where you are, what your shop does, what you guys specialize in, and kind of how how you got into this business. Well. Uh some guys got me into go-karting years ago and then started fooling with the small engines, uh, chainsaws, weed eaters, lawnmowers, push mowers, generators, whatever. And uh, the business just kind of grew from there. I'm at 190 Starlet Circle, Northeast Cleveland, Tennessee, back behind Calfee's just off of 64. But uh, we work on about any little small engine you have. And you guys, um, how long you guys been in business there? Started in 1992. Oh, you're almost on 30 years. Yeah, long time. That's crazy. And you don't look a day over 31. How'd you pull that off? I'm 29 and hold. I got you. I got you. If the business is older than you and you started the business, though, you're going to have to go to 30 at some point, <laughs> realize. Or you're going to have to change your story, one or the other. Oh, okay. Um, and, and I can tell you, um, personally and professionally, we've used uh, Stout uh, Racing so many times from uh, – I have a lawnmower that – I bought I bought a riding lawnmower on the cheap from a buddy who couldn't figure out how to fix it, and uh, a couple hundred dollars later, I got a nice, the loudest and fastest lawnmower in my neighborhood. I will tell somebody, <laughs> I will race anybody. Uh, my wife and I fight over who gets to cut the grass now, uh, but uh, Lewis took care of us. And then uh, even with our hand tools, some if you've got, I can tell you, um, you think about small engine stuff for you, those of you out there that have. Uh, you know, compression tools, uh, any pneumatic tools. We've had some that have jammed. Having somebody that knows how to get in there and get those little bitty springs and sets and screws and where to get them um, it has been super helpful for us at Pro 93. So, Lewis, it's that time of year. You're going to start bringing the machines out of the garage, out of the shed, pull off the tarp. What's the first thing somebody needs to do? Right now, whether it's a push mower or a rider, what do they what do they need to do before they mow their grass? They need to uh, dump the fuel. Even though they may have put stable in it, the fuel still goes bad. I would dump the fuel, uh, put fresh fuel in it, try to drain it out of the carburetor if possible to start it on as fresh a fuel as you can get. And I remember you going back to that when you were here last time um, in the fall before we talked when we talked about winterizing. I learned something that I had never thought about, but. You know, even the people are going to say, well, it was just three or four months ago I put that gas in there. But you made the point that gas today ain't like the gas 20, 30 years ago. Explain that, why, why it's so important. Well, years ago, we used to have lead in the gas, which lead was a uh, an additive that was a lubricant that lubricated all the top end of the engine, the valve guides, valves, all that. When they took the lead out, there was no more lubricant. Well... They used to have benzene in the fuel, and benzene was a preservative, just like preservatives for our food. Now they've taken the benzene out so the fuel won't last. Even if it's 100% gasoline, it just won't last. The fuel will go bad in a couple of months. Uh, you can use Stable. Stable is a good product. Uh, 
I've used it in the past, but I would still dump that fuel, put fresh fuel in it, and start afresh with it. If it's set there all winter long, it's a possibility that the fuel has gone bad. You'll never get it started because the fuel, the carburetor is going to have to be taken off. It's going to have to be cleaned and fresh fuel put in it. And that goes for, you think, that doesn't mean drain it out of your rider and put gas from the gas can that's been sitting there all winter yeah true so folks find a nice discreet place get rid of your gas <laughs> and go get some fresh uh that's your first tip so they've changed their gas they've got it ready what's what's the next thing they need to do if they're out there before that first mow uh they need to take their air filter off uh if if they do their own maintenance you need to change the oil you know of course check your blades sharpen your blades check your belts we do a full service on the lawnmowers, uh, doing all that, changing oil, spark plugs, air filter, fuel filter, uh, checking all the belts and greasing it and sharpening the blades or replacing them. But your air filter is very important because if your air filter gets stopped up, it's going to make it draw more fuel, which will foul your plug faster, plus it'll make it use more fuel than it normally would. So. At least take it off, look at it, and maybe try to blow it out, any dust or dirt. So what's and, – and I won't, I know everybody's mowers are different, especially with the new technology and everything, and everything may be sus- – I won't pin you down on a price, but what's a ballpark for getting for – for a service like that, the tune-up, blade sharpening, check the belts? What, what's, what's an inspection like that cost to somebody right now on a rider and a push mower? On a typical push mower uh, – Sharpening the blade, changing oil, changing spark plug, uh, cleaning out the air filter. It's, it runs about $50. Um, and then on a mower, it just depends on if it's a single cylinder. It starts at like 65 and goes up. And then, of course, you know, if you're having to replace belts and blades and all that, that's over and above the service. And you guys not only are... You guys are certified mechanics on and then actually dealers for certain uh, different we're engines. We're certified... Uh, Briggs and Honda, uh, Lifan, uh, Champion. Uh, we can service all those. We can get parts for the Kohlers. Uh, I have a large stock of uh, vintage Briggs and Tecumseh parts. Yeah. So just about anything we can service. Well, there you go, folks. So before that first, uh, before that first mow, if if maintenance isn't your thing or you don't have the time or you're just afraid, hey, I might be able to take it off. I don't know that I'll be able to put it back together the right way, which is what I worry about every time I fool around with a small engine. Um, get it to Stout Racing. How do they get a hold of you guys if uh, if they want to get, get their mower into you? They can give us a call, 423-584-6663. That's the number at the shop. And what, you guys got a website as well? Uh, we have a website for it's the racing side. We really yeah. don't have one, but it's www.stoutracingengines.com. Oh, we'll get we'll get to racing here. It's about racing season, isn't it? <laughs> it's already started. Yeah, you're headed somewhere today down to North Georgia, aren't you? No, Saturday morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah today, gotcha. yeah. So it's uh, all right. So we've got we've changed the oil. We've got it serviced. Whether we've done it ourselves or we've come to you. What are the things that you see throughout the year um, when people are mowing? It's, it seems as simple as it's literally just as simple as doing a walk around your yard to make sure you're not going to run something over. Well, a lot of things is uh, wind blows up, sticks. Sticks, you don't think to pick them up, and you can be driving around, and your tire will throw a stick in and get stuck in your uh, deck, and it can break a belt or yeah. it can lock it up and burn a belt up. So, you know, sticks need to kind of go around pick up any rocks that might have been uncovered by the rain all this rain we've had pick those up and any sticks and stuff like that because that can do damage yeah and it's you know i'm 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 gonna be honest here it's i see a stick i think oh i got this big riding mower i'm gonna make mulch out of that but i'm assuming that's probably not great for my blade is it it's not good for the blade (laughs) either no (laughs) how important is it to get your blade sharpened if they want a good manicured lawn, they need to uh, – the blades once a year is, is usually sufficient unless they do a lot of mowing like commercial guys. Most of them will have spare blades, and they'll change blades once a month and then sharpen those and have them ready because they want a good 
people want a good clean looking manicured lawn but a sharp blade is the only way it'll do that uh so and it and you know also look at your wheels on your deck because the wheels will wear as they wear the deck gets unlevel and it'll yeah. start mowing the yard unlevel so so we talked about that manicured lawn you just brought up there's other other power tools involved too a lot of two cycle stuff weed eaters blowers those sorts of things edgers um what's so I, what's your preference you see all it's it seems like wire trimmers anymore um everybody's looking for this next thing that's going to be better than hitting it on the ground and getting it to pop out a little more right yeah. feeding it out um and i and i'll be honest i've bought some of these miracle blades that you see on tv and it's like they last about three if you've got if you're trying to edge concrete or you're going around your you know the edging of your landscaping and you hit something that's about the length of the time my miracle blades lasted um do, is have you found a product out there that's better or do you just stick with the wire trimmers yourself uh on the on the trimmers the best bet is the spiraled wire and the largest diameter that you can put on your trimmer now yeah. you can change the trimmer head to go larger but the larger wire uh the plastic line but they have a spiraled which is a lot stronger yeah it'll last a lot longer well there you go see that stuff that i never would have known um and that said we talked about maintenance and getting things ready uh talk about is there any difference do you still want to dump out the fuel the two cycle from your from your you know smaller tools like that two cycle motors uh the blowers the the trimmers um you know weed eaters do you do you you know maintenance them the same way going into spring yes you definitely do and and i brought some that you can see uh they this is called super fuel they have a 40 to 1 mix two cycle and a 50 to 1 and it's already mixed it's it's pre-mixed it's 92 octane pure gas no ethanol in it because ethanol will destroy a two cycle motor yeah you know uh so i recommend this you can get it at walmart uh tractor supply most parts stores carry it we're giving them a shameless plug today but for those of you that are on facebook you can see these different ones and really it just depends on what they're whether they want the orange or the blue depends on what well some i mean every brand's different uh they'll have a blue or this one's a blue or orange or they'll have a red and a green the red's the 50 to one it depends on the mix the manufacturer for the manufacturer but it basically uh 50 to one is used in in all your skill products they prefer a 50 to one and the 40 to one is used in and echo uses a 50 to one most all the others will use a 40 to one and this is great because you don't have to have that little bottle you don't have to have that extra gas can that you pray to god stays the little gas can for two cycle before somebody fills it up um and uh this is ready to go out of the can they pop it in pour it right in yeah just pour it right out of your uh uh open cap pour it out you know of course into a container uh pump the little bubble and then pour that out and then pour this fuel in pump it back up it'll start refilling the primer bubble and fire it up now they do have these in gallons as well for those that want the gallon but, yeah uh but yeah i would recommend before you start the year off change this and put this in so folks we're we're going to take our first break here but uh, you're getting a little little master class today on how to maintenance uh, maintain your uh, lawn equipment and as always if it's something that you can't do don't want to do or don't have time to do you can give lewis and them a call what's your guys's number one more time 423-584-6663 and they're right here in cleveland on starlet circle over uh in the six right off 64 highway and apd 40 behind calfies uh, they would love to help you they've got uh great service great customer service and great pricing so we'll come back we're going to talk a little more we'll get get into some more lawn equipment uh spring 101 knowledge but also we're going to talk about giggity 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 it's time to go racing uh racing's opening back up and uh, stout racing builds racing engines and we're lewis is going to tell us a little bit what they got planned this year so we get back you're going to hear more from lewis from stout racing engines and small engine repair. This is Dennis. You're listening to Home Solutions right here on Mix 104.1 and 101.3 The Buzz.
Are you tired of going to YouTube or Google for answers to your home improvement questions? Maybe you have more projects than you have time. No matter where you are in the process, Pro 93 Home Solutions is ready to serve you. Pro 93 is a local, veteran-owned company offering residential and commercial remodeling, cleaning, and security. Contact us today at 458-4135 or online at pro93homesolutions.com. Let the pros at Pro 93 find the solution for your home or business. That's 458-4135. Welcome back. Hope uh, everybody's doing well out there. Coming up to the bottom of the hour here. Got a few more hours or a few more minutes here with Lewis from Stout Racing. Uh, They do everything from uh, build you a custom go-kart engine to go racing uh, or just maintain, build you the fastest, meanest uh, lawnmower in your neighborhood like he built for me. Uh, So, folks, we spent the last segment talking a little bit about what to do first the year. Look, Go through the basics. Make sure I don't forget anything, Lewis, but let's see if I learned anything. Uh, First thing you want to do is dump the fuel and everything you got. Yes, sir. Fuel goes bad. Yes, sir. Uh, Check your oil. Yes, sir. Do a little once-over. Just check your wheels. Make sure the wheels are your deck. If you've got a riding lawnmower, make sure those are taken care of. Do a once-over. If you can sharpen your blades, sharpen your blades. Check your belts. Basically, do a nice walk-around visible inspection of everything. Yes, sir. Um, spark plugs, good idea to change. How often should you change those? I would change them every year because yeah. a, a lawnmower, uh, you're basically running it wide open, and it's got a hard pull on it mowing or whatever you're doing. So uh, spark plugs, 2 or $3, very inexpensive to keep the engine running at its, its peak performance and it, listen folks you can spend a little bit of money now and do all this or get stuck and have to have one in the shop in the middle of summer and you have your neighbors hate you because you have the two foot tall grass in town i'm not saying that because i've ever had that happen because i have but uh here's the thing if that's not your thing you don't enjoy doing maintenance you're not able to do new maintenance or maybe you just don't have time with work kids family everything give lewis and them a call at stout racing um all right so we've talked a little bit about um lawnmowers weed eaters blowers those sorts of things now let's get into some fun stuff because you know what the weather's heating up out there hopefully the monsoon season's about to end here in the spring um (laughs) One of the things you guys do that makes your shop a little different is you guys uh, build, sponsor, and have a racing team for go-kart racing, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So talk to everybody a little bit about uh, if, if, they've ne- if somebody's brand new to karting, but they love racing, but maybe they've never seen a kart race, what, what drew you to it years ago? Uh, I actually used to run stock cars down at Cleveland Speedway, which is not here Ah, anymore. there we go. <laughs> And I got out of the stock car business, and a buddy of mine, uh, John Passivant and Gerald Williams, called me up and said, uh, hey, didn't you used to run stock cars? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, we're having handling problems on our go-kart. Can you come help? So I went and, and got hooked. And so you've been there ever since. I've been doing it ever since. And now Stout Racing's got a team. You guys have uh, – I know Travis was in here with us uh, early, at the late last year. We talked with him who works with you there at the shop. But also, guys raced in national championships as yeah. a driver. He's my driver. Yes, sir. And if you met Travis, folks, he's like this nicest, kind of quiet guy, unassuming. But that's why you got to worry about the nice and the quiet ones because he gets on a, on a go-kart track and he's a killer. Flip the cat. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, and you know, he was telling, he's told me stories about getting to race at Daytona. You know, and going to like the Super Bowl of kart racing, and uh, you guys have been you guys have been to national championships and placed in national championship races, right? Yes, sir. So, I know you've got some cool stories, but you've built some pretty crazy engines for folks. Oh yes. Um, tell everybody about the one you ship. I think it was to Arizona for the guy that was doing ultralight flying. You've built basically an that, airplane. That was Texas. Texas. We built a uh, engine for. A prototype a ultralight that they were trying to get an engine with more torque to be able to pull them off of the runway quicker and to get you know elevated or whatever they call it. I'm, I'm not anything with aerospace but uh yeah he's uh got i think over a thousand hours on it now yeah and i can tell you because i've been to some of these races is uh if you go to a kart race here i know you guys are leaving here when we're done here. You guys are headed to Dogwood Speedway in North Georgia tonight, right? Uh, yes, sir. And you guys, if you go there and they're going to see some racing tonight, 
you'll notice Lewis because he's the guy running all over. Because not only do you got you guys have sponsored carts, but there's people kind of see you as the engine doctor around the racetracks. There, there, you got a lot of people using your services, so to speak. Correct? Yeah. Saturday, I'll be the tech man, the dreaded tech man everybody <laughs> hates. <laughs> So uh, if you got nothing to do tonight, head on down Dogwood Speedway in North Georgia, just outside of Chatsworth, right? It's down 225, which yep. is Spring Place Road. It's just past the North Georgia Speedway for the big cars on the left-hand side of the road. You'll pass the entrance there on the right, and the next left is Dogwood Speedway. And, folks, it's an experience. It's fun. First time I was asked to go, I said, uh, no, I've been to Pigeon Forge, and I've seen go-karts. I'm cool. I've driven them. And they were like, no, you haven't seen this. And I go down there, and uh, my uh, it was absolutely, uh, absolutely, you could see why people get it the same way. It's the same attitude I had when I went to my first NASCAR race. Like, how exciting can this be? And then they say gentlemen start their engines, and the ground beneath you starts to rumble. And then you start seeing people going 190 miles an hour on a curve, in a, on a turn, and you realize, okay, yeah. I, I can see why people like this. And what's the top speed for some of the carts like in the in where Travis races? Uh, in the stock class, uh, you're looking about 62 to 68 <laughs> on a quarter mile oval. Crazy. A dirt oval. Uh, the uh, the limited modified and the open boys go anywhere from 90 to 110. Holy cow. They'll turn that quarter mile track in 10.5 seconds. So, uh, if you're out there and you're thinking, man, I'd love to get involved with this or I want to get my kids involved because what's the – kids of all ages drive these things, right? What's it, the, it's a family sport. Yeah. Kids can start on the dirt side of racing at seven. Yeah. On asphalt, they can start at five. Yeah. But uh, they're all in the, – uh, the kids have to run restrictor plate engines, so there's different plates for the different ages before they move up into the adult classes, but – it's a whole family-oriented sport. The whole family, the grandfathers, the grandmothers, the mothers, the dads, brothers. There's girls race. There's yeah, absolutely. At least a third amount of girls racing now than there was. So. And I can tell you, if you're, if you're out there looking and thinking, okay, this is something I'd like to maybe learn more about and just didn't know where to go, you got an expert right here in Cleveland. If you're, in, if you're listening to this, um, and even if you're watching it on Facebook, I know you've got customers – Technically, you just had a gentleman in from Ireland that was that you're going to be building tools for, and maybe possibly uh, we're doing some uh, rollouts in Australia. So, no matter where you're watching or you're hearing, you can give Lewis a call at Stout Racing, and they'll be able to help you out. Um, if you just maybe you want to get something into it, you've got a maybe you've got a youngster that's excited and, and has a little passion. You're trying to figure out what where to go, what to do. Um, you can you guys build carts as well, correct? Yes, sir. We do a complete race ready package if that's what they want. Uh, give us a call and come by and talk to us. You know, you we can show you the go karts and explain they're they're very safe. You know, we we very we stress safety in yeah. these things. Uh, but come over by and talk to us. I mean, we're there to help you in in this to help the whole family. Yeah. So, all right. So racing's going crazy. I know you've got um, you've got uh, a big trade show you do every year up in the Pigeon Forge, Sevierville area. Um, you have, you know, a website where you sell tools, plates, you know, all kinds of of tech tools. Um, you've also been asked to help uh, write rules for different carding organizations, sanctioning bodies, sanctioning bodies. You've had uh, been, you know, you like. Like you're gonna have today at Dogwood, you'll be the tech guy. You know, it's um, is it still as fun for you as it was? I'm still in it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I enjoy every day, every race I go to. Uh, I enjoy just being able to go help people. People come ask me about things, and you know, it's all about helping each other and and you know, striving, you know, for that. So when people are um, and so again. If you're looking for for any cart related small engine repair, whatever it is, and we've talked a little bit, a lot about yard maintenance, we've talked about the carting side of what you guys do, but you guys, especially with the storms we had this past week, you guys also do work on generators, correct? Generators, yes, sir. Uh, 
we have had quite a few here lately because yeah. people are trying to get them up because the yes. storm's coming. But yes, uh, we uh, are service uh, for the champion and uh, the generators. Uh, so we can and Honda, we can do service work on Hondas. So is it the same on same kind of an idea? Because for the most part, generators are one of those things that you don't think about till you need it. Um, you know, and you want it to be ready to go. So do you keep gas in it or do you wait and fill it up when you need it? It's best to keep gas in it because the, having the fuel in it, the tank won't rust inside and rust is your enemy. So it's best okay. to keep it full. You can put the stable. What, what I recommend for people is if you put it up once a month, crank it up, let it run, let it sit there and run, open the fuel valve, you know, and then shut your fuel valve and let it run until it runs out. And that gets the fuel out of the carburetor, out, out of the lines. You still have fuel in the in the tank, but refill it back up with fresh fuel. Yeah. Keep it full, and it won't rust in your tank, and that won't cause you problems down the road. And just and, and again, we're not trying to sponsor or, dis, or, or besmirch any other company, but in your experience, I know a lot of people, especially after what happened last Easter, with the storms and the tornadoes that move through here, people are are looking for generators, especially when it starts getting thunderstorm season again. In your mind, what's a good size for a home to have to be able to run the refrigerator? What what kind of size do they need? And um, you know, and I, I don't want to put you on too much of a spot, but what if you had to pick a couple brands that you know are reliable and and that work well? What would you buy? Uh, the the Champion generators are reliable. The uh, the uh, Storm generators, which is the live fan. Of course, the Honda is the top of the line. Yeah. Uh, as to far as to say the recommended side, that's that's hard to say because square footage of a house, you know, makes a difference as far as uh, lighting. Uh, well, what's a say? If say we just okay, hey, we we realize we may not be able to power my whole house, but I want to keep, I want to be able to maybe run the stove, the microwave, and the refrigerator. Keep the freezer running. What's a good base size that'll keep or keep those kind of items going for if, you? If you're wanting to, about a 7,500 watt continuous, yeah. Uh, there's a difference between your your startup, the 8,200, let's say generator on startup. But once it starts up and then it starts running all the appliances, that's your load. So if you're going to try to run freezers, refrigerators, microwaves, uh, and even an occasional stove. Uh, and a few lights. Yeah. What you may want to do is uh, you'll have to look on your refrigerator and, and all your appliances and get your wattage. Yeah. You, you have to figure out what your wattage is and what you want to run, and that's how you determine the generator you need because you don't want to be undersized, and if you're undersized, then you're going to cause more problems. Yeah. Uh, so you'll have to kind of like run – a few lights and possibly, you know, refrigerator and and uh, a freezer doesn't really qu require that much. But yeah. If you try to run a stove, yeah, eye top stove. Yep. Uh, not necessarily the stove stove, but you know, glass eye tops or they're gonna, top stoves. They're gonna get. They're gonna. They're gonna pull a bunch all at once. They're gonna pull a bunch all at once. The, the seventy five hundred watt will carry it, but yeah. you know, you may have to turn a few lights off or something, but. To, to truly figure it, you need to know the actual wattage of the generator that you need to power the appliances you want to run. And listen, folks, if this is if this is something again that you don't know what to do, what to do, what to buy, what to look at, or maybe you've got one that you're not sure if it's the right kind, you need to get it serviced. You haven't had it looked at, folks. You got an expert right here in Cleveland. Give give Lewis, Travis, and the guys and gals over at Stout Racing a, a, a call. One more time before we get out of here. How do they get a hold of you guys? Uh, call 423-584-6663. The address is 190 Starlet Circle Northeast, Cleveland, Tennessee. And they got the big, nice shop with the big, nice roof on it that Pro 93 put on for them. Uh, so look for that. It'll be a beautiful metal roof, as does your neighbor has a nice roof put on yeah. it right there. So uh, listen. It's been a pleasure having you in here. I know this is stuff people love to hear this time of year. Thanks for coming in, man. Thank you. We enjoyed it. Listen, 
We'll be back next week. Uh, got a special treat next week. Hoping to have a, a surprise guest from out of state in to talk to us about some some new uh, new roofing ideas that uh, uh, may be the last roof you ever have to buy. So uh, we'll talk about it next week. You're listening to the Home Solutions right here on Mix 104.1 and 101.3 The Buzz. Are you tired of going to YouTube or Google for answers to your home improvement questions? Maybe you have more projects than you have time. No matter where you are in the process, Pro 93 Home Solutions is ready to serve you. Pro 93 is a local, veteran-owned company offering residential and commercial remodeling, cleaning, and security. Contact us today at 458-4135 or online at pro93homesolutions.com. Let the pros at Pro 93 find a solution for your home or business. That's 458-4135.